untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a much requested deck, Grixis Midrange, featuring four copies of Snapcaster Mage, which was recently added to Arena. This is one of my all-time favorite cards. After finally making my first GP Top 4 with uh, four copies of Snapcaster that I borrowed from a friend, I finally decided to buy my own playset as kind of a reward, and I still have that very playset to this day. The 2-mana two 2-1 two Wizard has Flash, and when it enters a battlefield, target Instant or Sorcery card in our graveyard gains Flash back until end of turn, and the flashback cost is equal to its mana cost, so this can give some of our cheaper spells a second lease on life, and our deck is filled with a ton of cheap interaction, including removal spells for creature decks, as well as ways to interact with non-creature spells, so our deck is quite versatile and can face pretty much any opponent that we come across. And then our answers to non-creatures include three copies of Spell Pierce as our only counter spell, can counter target a non-creature spell unless its controller pays two mana, and in a format as fast as Historic, where curves tend to be quite low, Spell Pierce is going to be just as effective as some of the hard counters that are more expensive, and of course keeping up a single blue much easier than keeping up two mana for a counter spell, and also easier to flash back with Snapcaster when needed. Then we've got some hand disruption with three copies of Inquisition, can take away a non-land card with mana value three or less, and Thoughtseize can take away any non-land card, but it does cost us two life, so not quite as good against the aggressive decks in the format, but every now and then you do need to be able to take away a more expensive card, and then having both the discard spells and the late game gives us more versatility with Snapcaster Mage. Then we also have some cheap removal spells, full set of Fatal Push, and we also have some treasure tokens from Fable of the Mirror Breaker to potentially enable Revolt for us, and then the full play set of Fiery Impulse, which is the best version of a 1-mana red removal spell that can consistently deal 3 damage thanks to Spell Mastery. The only drawback is that it doesn't damage Planeswalkers, which can of course come up, and of course also doesn't damage players, so never as good as a Lightning Bolt will be, but I doubt we'll ever see a Lightning Bolt legal in Historic. And then we also have a cheap cantrip at one mana with four copies of Consider, can surveil one and then draw a card. Surveilling, putting additional cards in the graveyard can also be helpful for Snapcaster Mage, and can also put additional cards in graveyard to escape Cling to Dust, which is our final one drop. Another instant we can easily flash back with Snapcaster, gives us some main deck graveyard hate, which can be quite valuable against some of the graveyard combo decks in the format. But even against, let's say, a blue red Wizards, which is playing four copies of Arcanist in the main deck, we can still maybe exile a spell before the Arcanist gets to flash it back. And then we can also potentially gain a bit of life against the aggressive decks, which will come in handy. And then the escape in the late game gives us another card draw engine. Then at 2 mana besides Snapcaster, I'm also playing 2 copies of Shieldred's Edict, which is a pretty versatile removal spell, as it can make the opponent sacrifice both a token or a non-token creature, can be helpful against, let's say, hexproof creatures or some larger creatures that we cannot take out with Fatal Push or Impulse, and then we can also make the opponent sacrifice a Planeswalker against control strategies, and then we can still maybe discard our Fatal Push and Impulse to some of our 3 drops like Pyromancer and Fable, so we don't have a lot of dead draws in the deck. And then Expressive Iteration remains one of the best card draw spells ever printed, it recently got banned in Legacy, so it just goes to show how powerful this card is, and in the late game we can also maybe get it back with Snapcaster for a ton of value. And then our three drops include Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which also has awesome synergy throughout the deck, can potentially transform into Reflection, which can then start copying our Snapcaster Mage to get even more value out of our graveyard, and then of course the Shaman token making treasures can help us ramp and enable Revolt on Fatal Push. And then two copies of Seasoned Pyromancer, which is also great to copy with Reflection once we're empty-handed to simply draw two cards, or we can also use it for a bit of card selection, and for every non-land card we discard we get to make an elemental token, can also exile it from our graveyard for five mana to make two more of those 1-1 one -one tokens. And then a mana base includes a ton of the new fast lands from Phyrexia, four copies of Darkseid Shores, three copies of Blackleaf Cliffs, and then we already had four copies of Spire Bluff. And then we've got two of each of the remaining shock lands in our colors, and then a few pathways to round out the mana base, so these can come into play untapped later in the game. We're not playing any of the channel lands since we really need our mana fixing, so we can cast all our cheap interaction early on without having to mess with our colors. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. We've got some hand disruption, removal, and card draw. Our colors are sorted. Opponent's red green werewolves. So for now, we can thought seize. And see double Dusquatch Recruiter. 
and the new Immerwolf giving wolves plus one plus one and non-human werewolves you control cannot transform. So they will stay in their nightbound forms basically. So yeah, pretty tough pick. Going for Immerwolf makes sense, Recruiter can provide card advantage. So could see taking that one as well. Naturalist will enter with a plus one counter thanks to Tenacious Pup. So we wouldn't be able to take it out with Impulse on this turn. Next turn we can. So given that we have triple iteration, I'm fine casting one now. And then Spell Pierce is not going to be very good. So between Consider and Fable, probably prefer Fable. And then these don't really matter. So next turn we might go for Iteration plus Impulse. Need to find some cheap removal. And we'll have to take out Tovalar now. Alright, another Spell Pierce, not very useful. Wouldn't be able to use the Dark Slick Shores to cast Impulse. So, Pyromancer to hand. And then we'll Impulse now. So, not in the best position here, although Pyromancer can hopefully make up for it. Our opponent is stuck on two lands, but they can generate mana with a Naturalist. Okay, another Impulse was good. So now we could Fable and still Impulse, take out the larger Naturalist, or we can wait to maybe answer the Immerwolf, which is also reasonable. So let's try that. Alright, so we're gonna see Immerwolf main phase. Wait for, we'll wait for them to attack and then ambush the pup. We are down to four. Just need to find some more removal. So land can probably go. And then Pyromancer I may need as a blocker. And then I may prefer keeping Consider in hand to make a token with Pyromancer. Could also go digging with Iteration. And if we find removal for Naturalist I can also maybe attack with a Shaman make a treasure. So I think we ditch Consider here. Okay, push is great. So I can push the larger naturalists. And then... Maybe also find to just iteration now, see what we can find. Okay, so another fable in hand. And then I could cast an inquisition this turn alongside fatal push. That seems reasonable. So have a look with Inquisition, kill one of their werewolves, and then we can block with a Shaman token if necessary. So let me start by taking a look. Right, another pack song pup, gone. And let's just push the Naturalist and pass. If our opponent draws removal, we could be dead. So that's the risk of this line of play. Happy to trade for Recruiter. Which they'll activate on the way out. Finding another one drop. Okay, put on some empty. Our hand's not bad. And a Snapcaster was a great pickup here. So can Snapcaster and then Fatal Push killing Naturalists and then next turn we can start copying Snapcaster as well. Alternatively, 
I could Snapcaster Iteration, which is a bit on the greedy side, and then hope to still hit a removal spell off Iteration. Yeah, I don't think we need to take any risks. Let's just Snapcaster. Get back Fatal Push, keep Impulse to maybe answer Tovalar later. And then Reflection blocks Tenacious Pup. And next turn we can start copying all our various creatures, including Seasoned Pyromancer now too. So maybe play Pyromancer, discard Fable, make a token. And then can attack with the Snapcaster, keep Reflection available to maybe copy either a Snapcaster or a Pyromancer. Okay, another Recruiter is pretty good. Gets to activate here. Although we can get back our Impulse to take it out. Recruiter does not work with a day and night cycle, so it's not a werewolf, despite it being nighttime. Okay, get to untap and cling to dust one of our better draws, since it puts me out of burn range on the off chance that our opponent was playing some burn spells. Can start by copying Snapcaster with a reflection and clear a path for this incoming attack. Opponent activates. Finding another recruiter. That's the last one. Okay, so we can attack all out and then could see just playing Fable and keeping up Cling to Dust slash Consider. Could Cling to Dust now to just gain three, so we don't have to kind of play a, a game of chicken in case our opponent top decks a burn spell. That seems fine. Opponent's at 10, so we should be able to close out the game. And the Shielder's Edict will clear a path nicely. So we can copy Snapcaster Mage, get back Expressive Iteration if we want to. And then we'll have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 exactly. There's another Snapcaster. We can also just cast a Snapcaster now and attack with a Reflection if we'd like. Although copying a creature always provides a tiny bit more value. Recruiter activates, finds another naturalist, and this should wrap things up. Okay. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, sadly with a one lander, which I don't think I can keep. Let's take a mulligan. This seems better. So we've got a nice mix of interaction. Uh, casting Iteration turn 2 is going to be tricky if we decide to keep Thoughtseize, because then I won't have blue-red in play. So possible I'm better off ditching Thoughtseize, keeping the Cling to Dust, which we can still cast later, and then keep up Spell Pierce on 1, and then turn 2, I guess Impulse, turn 3 Iteration. Might still be better off keeping Thoughtseize over Cling to Dust. So, close call. Let's just get rid of Cling to Dust and then I'll uh, keep up maybe Impulse turn 1. And then turn 2, keep up Spell Pierce. More likely to see a creature we want to kill as opposed to something we need to counter. Okay, Channeler definitely worth taking out. Okay, so I could Iteration just to be able to Fable on Curve by finding a land. I think I still just keep up Spell Pierce since we need to make up for the lost card advantage from Mulliganing. So we'll take it slow. Hope they play into Spell Pierce here. Alright, could counter a Crash Through. It's not the most high value target. Put in probably kind of a Burgi combo deck 
which is going to go off at some point with a breach as well, which I may prefer countering. But this still uses my mana efficiently, so maybe it's fine. Alright, another cantrip. And then now we could just play Fable on Curve, which is probably better. And then the Shaman lets me cast a Thoughtseize next turn if it survives. Cling to Dust is actually going to be pretty useful in this matchup since we're putting kind of a graveyard combo deck. We did find a black source, although opponent has Burgi in play. So we need to try and find an answer to it. Fatal Push could work thanks to the treasure token. So I don't think I need to keep Watery Grave necessarily. And then I'm still happy keeping Thoughtseize. Okay, Fatal Push, that'll do. So I can Iteration and then attack and before blockers push Burgi. And maybe even find a black source to cast Thoughtseize. So we'll keep Snapcaster, and then I can just play Spire Bluff for the turn. So we'll go full control, attack, and push. Okay. And then Snapcaster plus Reflection is going to be great. Tactics just to cycle here. Anger also cycled. And a looting. So opponent likely has a breach in hand by now. Which we can try and take away with Thoughtseize. And then I will have Snapcaster plus maybe another Thoughtseize available. Or we can try and counter something with Spell Pierce, although our opponent's got a lot of mana now. And double breach, yeah. So take one, attack, and take the other. And next turn we can copy Snapcaster, go for expressive iteration. And her opponent explodes, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. Up against a Gigantha's Companion, turn 1 Inquisition. Can do it again on turn 2. And our opponent on blue-red Wizards. So against Wizards I just like making sure we answer the creatures. Symmetry Sage is probably the scariest one in this hand. Opponent's gonna maybe play Swiss Spear, and then next turn we can take away a second creature. That seems fine. And then I could play tapped Steam Vents, since we still have a pathway to enter untapped on turn 4. Okay, Arcanist, I guess, is a scarier of the creatures now. And then next turn we could Snapcaster plus Inquisition. Okay, Pwn is just gonna blast. And there's another Snapcaster. Yeah, going for Fable doesn't seem quite as good as going for Snapcaster. So, have to do it now. Make sure to leave black mana untapped. Don't trust the auto-tapper when it comes to Snapcaster Mage. Glad we've got Inquisition here instead of Thoughtseize, otherwise we would have lost a lot of life. Another Symmetry Sage. Now our opponent doesn't actually have blue mana, so maybe we can... Let them keep Symmetry Sage, and then next turn take it away with another Snapcaster. And then for now, maybe take the Discharge. So they cannot necessarily attack past Snapcaster. Okay, opponent found blue mana, so they can empty their hand here. I'll happily trade. So now we'll just go for Fable. Push was excellent too. So we can Fatal Push Symmetry Sage, and then play Fable, and then next turn Snapcaster, Flashback Push. So yeah, pretty excellent start so far. 
Opponent oh, must have drawn a non-creature spell here. Alright, never mind, it was a bluff attack. This opponent feels like they're very far behind if they're making that play. So a Snapcaster goes for Fatal Push, kill Balmor, and then we can attack. And then next turn we'll get a Reflection, which can maybe copy Snapcaster as well. Probably fine to keep a land in hand in case we pick up another discard effect. Opponent putting Gigantha in hand is a good sign for us. And there's another Fable, excellent. And our opponent explodes, yeah, too much value from the Grixis deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a solid hand. Good mix of removal and discard. Up against blue-black rogues. And against rogues, Fatal Push should be the more versatile removal spell compared to Fairy Impulse. Although we do want to spread out our spells a bit better here, since we only have the one black source and a lot of black one-drops. So we'll want to either Thoughtseize or Fatal Push here. And uh, having a look with Thoughtseize doesn't hurt. And then next turn we can maybe answer the creatures. Okay, Scavenger is going to be a little trickier to kill with Fatal Push. So that's a reason to hang on to Impulse. The Thought Thief we can pretty easily take out. So we'll take a Scavenger. Opponent's going to main phase Thought Thief. And mills for a bunch. Okay. So I can Fatal Push Thought Thief, and then can wait and see if we want to Impulse Wind Robber, or maybe the 3-drop here. Perfect. And then we'll have our Fable on Curve. And I'll hang on to all removal spells. The rogue deck can potentially win by milling, but they're more likely using mill as kind of an enabler. For now, can discard a cliffs and attack. Duelist is fine. So our opponent can draw with the wind robber if we try and take it out. So I'm not going to prioritize it. Play Fable, we'll see if it resolves. And then probably fine to hang on to Steam Vents. And just take the one. Not too concerned about Wind Robber. Wind Robber could actually be scary for opponent can sneak in a Zareth. Discard another land. And then attack with our tokens. And pass it back. It's going to be an enforcer end of turn. That one we're happy taking out. Now that we have all these treasures, Fatal Push is just as good as Fiery Impulse. But I'll keep one of each. Okay, opponent goes digging with a Wind Robber. So now I'm not even worried about potential ninjutsu. And then Negates can just kill the Enforcer again. And I uh, guess we'll Impulse keep our treasures. Okay, so... Opponent on mills us, Snapcaster gone, would have been fun with a reflection, but oh well. And our opponent concedes, yeah, the Fable just takes over here, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand lacks cheap removal against creature decks, so we could certainly get punished by a fast start, but I'm still gonna try it out and then... Ideally, we're playing a matchup where Spell Pierce and Thoughtseize are more useful. And with turn 1 Watery Grave, that may be the case. 
So I can keep up Spell Pierce, and if we don't need to Spell Pierce, I can consider, and then maybe Thought Seize next turn. It's gonna be a Consider, that's fine. Could be some sort of Mirror Match. Okay, opponent passes. We'll Consider. And then don't really need another land. So now the plan is to Thought Seize, keep up Spell Pierce. Opponent considers a response. Typically better to hide information with your cantrips and cast a cantrip afterwards. I see. So release to the wind. Opponent might be kind of a Valky combo deck. But um, not too worried about a potential combo with release. So we'll just take the Inquisition here. Next turn we can Iteration, still keep up Spell Pierce. Pyromancer also an option if we just want to start applying a bit of pressure. Although it would mostly be discarding lands. So let's Iterate. And then Iteration in hands. Can uh, not quite play Cliffs and keep up Spell Pierce. Although maybe that's fine if we go Shields down for a turn. Sure. And then I can discard more lands to the Pyromancer. Okay. So I can Iteration again, although I'm gonna have to start discarding to hand size soon. So maybe we just Pyromancer, discard a couple lands, keep up Spell Pierce. That seems fine. So I'll play a blue pathway, keep up a Spire Bluff. And then Spire Bluff and Steam Vents can go. Okay, can Inquisition next turn, that's fine. Looting is acceptable. So your opponent is digging for some sort of combo. And we've got a lot of disruption incoming. Looting flashed back. Now might be the time to spell Pierce just to use my mana. And Spell Pierce is losing effectiveness as the game progresses. So kick things off with Inquisition. See, triple release Fatal Push. Well, probably take the Fatal Push. And then I could Iteration and then try and keep up Edict for a potential Valky if that shows up. Or I could set up a Snapcaster plus Another discard spell, but again, not very effective with triple release. So let's iterate, keep a black mana, and then Snapcaster in hand. And we'll just take the land here. Fine to take two damage. Can also answer Hive if they animate it. Alright, it's gonna be Nickel Bolas, that makes sense. So we can edict that one as well. And then discard a land. Okay, Fatal Push is more insurance in case of a Valky. And then I could fire off Snapcaster on Iteration. That seems acceptable. And then Edict in hand. Keep the Watery Grave. And I think we just pass as opposed to Inquisitioning. Keep up our instant speed removal. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, just too much value from Snapcaster here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, missing red mana, but we've got a good mix of interaction and consider can hopefully help find red for impulse and iteration. Turn one elf will happily take out here. And another fatal push was a good draw. So mono green elves. Don't have any sweepers in the deck, but plenty of spot removal to go around. 
and then now play Steam Vent, so we set up Iteration for next turn. And we'll Fatal Push now, I think, before they get to draw off Visionary. And then Impulse can answer some of the three mana Lords, which maybe we cannot take out with Fatal Push yet. And then we can always consider if necessary. Okay, so do we want to kill Visionary? It's not the scariest creature, but we're trying to play a long grindy game, so it's probably still fine to do so. And then iteration in our turn. We do have a spell pierce in hand for a potential collected company, but now we might as well just check it out with a thought seize. Even though my spire bluff will be tapped next turn. Take company. And then Crater Hoof is gonna be stranded in hand for a while. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing black for Fatal Push, but Consider can hopefully help out there. And we get to see a few extra cards before we'll need it. Opponent's a blue green. Make that bant. Could be more of a control deck. And Snapcaster, while a nice card is not gonna help cast Fable. Alright, black mana sorted now. And a rattle chains. Alright, so it's banned spirits. I would like to respond here. Probably just with Edict, although Pun might have some three mana creatures that we cannot take out easily with Fatal Push. So sure we'll fatal push now. And then turn three could try Fable, may get spell quellered. Still don't have double black. So going for a three drop is probably fine. And between Fable and Pyromancer. Fable's the more important one to resolve. If they spell Queller, then next turn we could still try and Edict it. So sure. Alright. So best case scenario, opponent plays a smaller creature that dies to Fatal Push, and then Edict can deal with the spell Queller. Although now we might see a Collected Company instead. Okay, Spell Pierce was actually a pretty huge draw. Could go for Pyromancer, keep up Spell Pierce, so they don't cast Company Response. It's gonna be another Spell Queller instead. That one we sadly cannot Fatal Push nor Spell Pierce. And our opponent may be playing with a new Drog Skull Captain as well, giving their team Hexproof. Okay, so we still don't have double black, so I think we wait to make a move until next turn. So we can potentially Edict, if they flash in a smaller creature we can push it and still get rid of a Spell Queller here. Alright, Company will Spell Pierce. And then now I can Edict. Nope, never mind, I guess the game did not hold priority there, that's unfortunate. Because now if I go for Edict, opponent could just flash in a smaller spirit that I could have fatal pushed. So I'll have to take four. Yeah, normally you get priority after a spell resolves, but I guess not if you don't put a stop in this case. Do I try to edict? If they have another company that would be bad too. Or I can wait and respond to a potential company. So I'll put a stop on my own end step here. And then see if our opponent goes for company. If they do, I may Edict in response. Alright, nothing. It's a bit of a waiting game. Selfless Spirits. That's fine. Since that just dies to Fatal Push. So let me push Selfless Spirit and see what happens. That worked. And sure, let's Edict. Right, third spell queller was to be expected. 
impulse to the rescue. That's what we needed. Get back edicts. Kill Spellcaller again. And now there's just one left. Okay, so we're still in the game. Fatal push left, which we can enable with the Shaman tokens. And a Skyclave will enable Revolt for us. So we're in decent shape, although a company of the top could still be scary. But now Pyromancer gets to just draw two cards, so that feels great. And another Edict. Okay, discard Blood Crypt. Let's iterate. Finding Cling to Dust for a bit of life gain. And then... Can play out a Steam Vents. Can Iteration again. Finding Spell Pierce is not all that useful anymore. So we'll just put Iteration in hand, and then we can cast a Fatal Push right now. Thanks to the Treasure Tokens enabling it. Move to Attackers. And then we're going to be able to close out the game very quickly. Okay, so we might even be able to beat Company now. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Yeah, that was a close one, needed that Fiery Impulse, which proved to be the better one matter removal spell, given the circumstances. Alright, so we got to see our Grixis mid-range deck in action, and this has been a true delight to play. Feels like we've got all the angles covered, as long as we draw the right interaction, but we've got a ton of card draw to make sure we do, and then Snapcaster can help us double dip, which is why that card is so awesome and versatile. So yeah, I can definitely recommend this if you're looking for an interactive Snapcaster deck in Historic. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.